G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Tuesday evening here in Australia and the market hasn't bounced back like I thought it would. It's actually gone down. So still hanging in there above 1.5 trillion. Not too far off the 1.6 trillion dollar mark, but it definitely has gone down. And we'll have a look at the charts uh, shortly to kind of see where it may go. And again, you know, who really knows what's going to happen? We're all hoping it's going to go up. But it really did get rejected fairly hard from the $42,000 level and is continuing on a downward uh, movement from there. Could absolutely bounce in the next few minutes. It may not. And this could be just what was essentially a bull trap. Uh, and that won't be good. But let's move on. We'll have a look. BTC dominance dropped again. It was up around 48%. So now 46%. BTC price sitting around kind of 38 uh, thousand thirty eight and a half thousand dollars and the total volume in 24 hours uh, it's doing all right it's nothing sort of too special but I mean interesting it's up 30.4 uh, 34.3 percent yet prices and markets are down gas prices starting to creep up very funny uh, or not very funny I suppose <laughs> it's not very funny even though I'm laughing at my own silliness uh, it is interesting considering the gas prices are going up when we've got the Ethereum hard fork about to come any minute. So maybe the uh, miners are trying to, you know, grab every single little last cent that they can. Uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Now, it is the, it's soon to be the fourth here in Australia, but it's going to be not until uh, the fifth for us. Uh, and the fourth overseas. So we're sort of around a little bit over 24 hours away from uh, ETH. Uh, EIP, EIP, sorry, 1559 being rolled out, short of there being something that comes out and says it's been delayed again, and that is completely possible. But let's have a look at the market. So it's, it looks like a bit of a sea of red there, really. There's a few little bits of green here and there. But again, it is to be expected when the overall market is down nearly 3%. Not quite, but pretty close. Right, let's have a look. Has anything performed well in the last 24 hours? There'll always be a couple of outliers. There we go, Voyager. Boom, made a big move, and that's probably uh, got to do with them purchasing uh, CoinFi, I think it is, something like that. Uh, they purchased, uh, made a purchase, and that has really pumped up the price, so congratulations to them. Stacks also doing well, uh, Elrond doing well, Rune doing well, Terra Luna uh, is doing quite nicely, finally making some moves, and then look, we're into, you know, just kind of single digit gains. Any gains a good gain, we'll take it, don't get me wrong. But really, we got a couple of really nice gains there, particularly VGX, well done to them. Uh, Rune, not too bad. And then, you know, two kind of okay movers and then we're into really tiny moves. What about losses though? That's what we need to have a look at considering the market is down uh, in general. What's been hit the hardest? All right, Safe Moon. I mean, how is this still even there? It's unbelievable. I mean, it's been 0.002%. Oh, sorry, 0 0.000002 uh, for such a long time. So I've got no idea uh, how that's still even hanging in the top 100. Uh, there we go. Uh, Quant just jumped up there and overtook it. Convent, Am, Decred, Safe Moon now taking it out again. You know, I don't think Safe Moon could honestly go any lower. Uh, yeah, I feel sorry for anyone who was in there. And it'd be interesting if people. Uh, or somehow still up with that. But anyway, it is what it is. All right, uh, Psycoin. Now look, double digits, high single digits. You know, no kind of real crazy losses, but there is a number of losses there. I mean, T-Fuel's down. I just bought some T-Fuel literally not long uh, ago, and I bought some uh, Theta not long ago, and I bought uh, myself enough Theta uh, to be able to stake today. So that was not cheap. Had to... Uh, make a couple of trades there that we'll have to wait and see whether that pays off in the long run but I like what Theta's about uh, there's been a lot of hype around them and not just hype look lots of good news as well main nets coming out and things like that so you know my Theta position still would be lucky to make up 1% uh, one of my total portfolio I haven't actually checked I'd have to have a look uh, but I'd, yeah, I'm not sure I'd even make up that uh, yeah again I'm still on board. I needed more exposure to the NFT side of things and that, and streaming services, so I got it there. But look, yeah, losses all over the place. Let's go have a look at the Bitcoin chart. All right, what do we got? One, two, three, four. Four days of red now. And what's interesting is it looks like it may be coming back to try and sort of retest this $36,000 level. 
Now, what will be interesting is if we go below the $36,000 level, because then it means we're probably gonna come down to around about the $32,000 range, sort of somewhere around about sort of here, and then we're probably just gonna chop and bounce around. It is possible we come back down here and bounce back up like a V-shaped recovery, but I just don't see it. I think the V-shaped recovery would, recovery would have to be around this $36,000 mark. If we go below 36,000, then I think we're gonna come back down here and chop around for a long time. And I think, yeah, it's just gonna be a long drawn out market. No matter what people are trying to say, and again, this isn't financial advice, this is just my personal opinion, but the markets have changed. They're not the same as what, they've used to, what they used to be before. Now they are still somewhat similar, but it's just we've never seen Bitcoin sort of do something like this in what we considered to be a bull market. And a lot of people consider to still be a bull market. We are traveling, side, traveling sideways for quite some time and just really chopping around. I mean, you know, we can sort of zoom out and we can go back and have a look at what it was like in 2013. That's really what we're looking for. So I think you're gonna find we didn't chop around. I mean, that was it right there. So bang, pulled down and then chopped around for a little bit, but then started to make its way back up. Maybe this is what we're seeing somewhere, something similar to this here. But even then, I don't know, we didn't chop around like that. So it is still very different uh, from what we're seeing right now. So again, no markets are ever exactly the same and we do need to keep that in mind. But I just think now that the big players are here and people are clued on to just how much they think this is all going to be worth, I think there is a ton of manipulation uh, going on. And yeah, it's going to be very hard to try and play these markets if you think it's going to play out just like it did last time. You know, there's the theory that the uh, ball cycles are lengthening and people have, you know, challenged that. There's, you know, the theory that the form... Uh, four-year cycles are still uh, in play and staying the same and that hasn't been disproven yet but this just this is something that we haven't seen for quite some time oh well we haven't really seen ever again if this is a bear market this is even more different to a bear market usually bear markets are very steep and drop uh, off hard this just kind of played out this dropped hard but now it's just chopping around and it'll be interesting to see if this is what the new bear markets look like. Maybe Bitcoin only falls 50% uh, and chops around sideways for a number of months uh, before it starts to go back up. And maybe those real big parabolic moves to the upside that we've seen are now just a distant memory. I'm not saying Bitcoin won't go up and you know double, triple its value over time and things like that, but maybe we're just not gonna see those kind of you know 20 sort of X returns from Bitcoin anymore. And maybe the markets uh, yeah, have now started to level out. I don't think that, and again, never financial advice. It'll just be interesting to see if that is actually what's happening because the truth is I don't know what's happening at the moment. Again, I still think we're in the bull market. I think this is just a, a shakeout and a correction. And again, now there's big players in here. They're gonna try and probably keep it as low as they can, make it as boring as they can for as long as they can before they just can't do it anymore. And then they have to let it go to start making those profits. And in all fairness, I literally do not have a problem if this market moves sideways for a year. I would have a problem if it continued to go down for a year, that wouldn't be a lot of fun. But it, look, even if it did go down for a year, I'd just keep buying because I know in my heart uh, and my gut and you know my head and everything's telling me this is going to be you know the future. So eventually when it does go up, it's gonna go up pretty hard. But like I said, maybe this is what the new markets are sort of like now. Uh, it doesn't look like any market that I've ever really seen before. And in all fairness, I haven't been, you know, looking at markets for years and years on end. But yeah, interesting. I am hoping for the $36,000 bounce and we start to go back up, but maybe not. We'll have to wait and see. All right, only a couple of news stories, not too much going on at the moment. Miami is set to launch its own cryptocurrency and they're gonna reward their users in Bitcoin. So the idea is that people will support Miami by buying or mining Miami coin and the funds will be diverted to the city's treasury. And then I guess there's gonna be rewards that they're gonna pay you in Bitcoin for doing things like that. So is this the future where, you know, 
key, you know, like states, I guess, even cities and that maybe have their own coin. I, I'm not sure how this is going to go and whether it's going to take off or not. I mean, you know, governments could possibly, you know, sort of force their residents to use these kind of things. But, you know, who wants to go down that path? It'll just be interesting to see how this is. You know, it's a first of its kind. Miami has its own coin. We'll see whether Miami's going to get behind it. And, you know, what other awards are in Bitcoin that they're going to receive? Is it going to make it worth worth it? And, you know, is the Miami coin, does it have a hard uh, fixed cap? Or is it something that can just keep getting bigger, i.e. another fiat sort of currency? Very, very interesting. I'll be keeping my eyes open uh, and watching for how this goes. Because, look, if it does go well, then it's probably going to, you know, see a lot of adoption in other places around the world. If it doesn't go so well, then it's probably going to be a clue for, you know, other places thinking of doing the same that, you know, the people, they just don't want this. You know, they're happy with what we have. Again, you know, Ethereum and Polkadot and Cardano and you name it, whatever cryptocurrencies we sort of have. Uh, this could be a fad coin where everyone jumps on it for a minute thinking it's going to pump to the moon and then unfortunately people get burnt. Or it could be a smash hit. Again, eyes peeled. I'll be watching to see how this does. All right, former Monero leader has been arrested for fraud and it's unrelated to Monero though. So after leaving Monero in December 2019, Ricardo Spagna, Spagni, hopefully I'm saying that right, has been apprehended on charges unrelated to the cryptocurrency. Spagni uh, was arrested last month for alleged fraud committed between 2009 and 2011. So that was a long, long time ago. While residing in South Africa, his crimes have no relation to his work on the, on the Monero network. So, all right, it'd be interesting to see what was going on uh, around that time. And I mean, that is like literally not long after Bitcoin's inception, you know, sort of started in 2008, really hit its stride in 2009 and started to take off in 2010. Does it have anything to do with cryptocurrency in general, as opposed to just not related to Monero? I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see, uh, you know, yeah, what happens in the future. But again, interesting. At least I think it is. All right. For any one of my Australian viewers, so Aussie, 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 Aussie crypto exchange Coinjar partners with Mastercard for crypto cards. Coinjar card will be made available through digital and physical cards and currency supports fiat-like transactions for over thirty different cryptocurrencies. That is pretty big. Uh, I haven't personally used Coinjar. Uh, it's got a good reputation here in Australia. They're one of the kind of, you know, reasonable size exchanges. It's not the biggest as far as I know. Uh, there are a couple of others that are right up there. Uh, and that would be, uh, God, SwiftX, I think, is one. Reserve, uh, Reserve Exchange and then CoinSpot, which is all I use. I think CoinSpot's the biggest. Again, I could be wrong. I don't keep too up to date with it, but CoinJar are definitely well known, and now they have their own MasterCard and a digital version and a physical version. So very, very interesting, and to see whether other crypto exchanges will follow suit, particularly the ones here in Australia. I mean, we already know there's lots of, you know, crypto cards coming out at the moment. BlockFi's got one, and I think... Uh, Binance uh, had one as well and you know a number of uh, other places like that are doing the same all right last but not least Mike Novogratz uh, forking out the cash for his daughter so Miley Cyrus performs at birthday party for Mike Novogratz's daughter so Mike Novogratz's daughter Gabriella Novogratz uh, and she's an actress by the looks of it uh, she got Miley, Miley Cyrus to, well, she didn't, her father got Miley Cyrus to perform at her birthday for her. So Mike Novogratz is obviously well in the money at the moment. And it was not that long ago, like we're going back to 2018, where, you know, people were really, you know, kind of laughing at Mike Novogratz because, you know, he thought, well, not so much he thought, whether he knew it was going to have a big retracement or not, who knows, but he was talking about it's the future and this, and then, you know, crypto just took that big massive dive in 2018, and a lot of people would have, you know, probably just pulled the pin after that, but, you know, he's probably done his research, I would say, and, you know, stayed committed, and now, I mean, he's going to be up there with one of the richest blokes in the world, he won't be too far off, I'm, I'm not saying the richest bloke in the world, he may not even be in the top 10, but, you know, 
for all the wealth around the world, I think he's going to move right up there. I think he is literally going to be one of the richest people in the world uh, in the years to come, just because uh, he was one of those true early adopters in this digital space. Not the earliest adopter, but definitely uh, an early adopter. And again, he's, you know, putting money into all sorts of projects and things like that. You know, he is a VC sort of firm, and it'll be interesting to see exactly where he goes from here. All right, look, it's getting late here in Australia. There wasn't a lot happening. Like I said, I'm really just watching for Bitcoin. Can it bounce off this $36,000 level or even sort of where it is, $38,000 level and start to make its way back up? Or is that it? Is it just simply going to go lower? You know, when this is married up to the Wyckoff, Wyckoff accumulation, this does look like the spring. And it did say that there was supposed to be a little retracement sort of somewhere around about here. Hopefully that's it and we're making our way to the upside, but there are no guarantees in life. So again, you know, my personal opinion is just proceed with caution. If you've got money on sitting on the side, that's great. Keep it there. I wouldn't be throwing it all into anything at the moment. And again, never financial advice. Just my personal opinion, because if it goes down again, you want to have money to be able to buy uh, the dips. That's how it works. If you have no money to buy the dips, then you can't. You're just sort of all stuck. So as much as people say, you know, cash is trash and all the rest of it, and I, I agree cash is trash long term, short term, over the couple of weeks, months, and like maybe a year or so, absolutely not. Uh, it is not cash. It's still the dollar is the king. It hasn't lost its mantle just yet. Likely to come in the future, in my personal opinion, but again, we'll just have to wait and see. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. It's pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment, but that's just the way it goes, and I'll see you next time.